Hey, what's going on, y'all? Jay from JS Films, and welcome back to another tutorial in my Unreal Engine 5 filmmaking tips. So this is going to be part seven. I know it's been a long time since I made a tutorial video like this, but I'm going to try to go back to it this year. So that being said, I've been seeing a lot of short films being made with Unreal Engine 5, and I'm starting to notice a lot of people not quite getting what motion blur is all about and as far as the settings goes and things like that. So what I'm gonna do in this video is just kind of discuss to you how I handle motion blur whenever I'm rendering cinematics or making any type of gameplay with Unreal Engine 5. So before I get started here, I'm gonna discuss motion blur with you all. Now, if you're creating a video game and you wanted to run a 60 frames per second, you might not want motion blur. Even for me, whenever I'm playing video games, I turn off motion blur because it makes me sick and dizzy. However, if you're trying to simulate cinematic movies or film, you are going to want to turn on motion blur because in real life, we have motion blur. A good example of this is if you put your hand in front of your face and start waving it really fast like this, your eyes are going to process that motion blur. So you can see it's really blurry. So in real life, we have motion blur. And I am saying this because in my channel, I get a lot of comments saying, why do you turn motion blur on? Well, if I'm making a cinematic or a movie, I'm going to want motion blur turned on. All right. So here we are in my scene. I have the Neo Tokyo Challenge open from the artist that I've discussed and made videos about recently. And I have one of the motorcycles that it came with it in here. And I already have it in the sequencer. And basically, it's just going to play. I'm not going to do anything here. It's just going to spin. All right. And what we'll do here is we're going to render this out because I want to compare the before and after here and show you pretty much the difference between with it on and off. So I'll click my movie render queue here and I'll just open this. Uh, JPEG is OK. And what I will do is I'll go to settings, anti-aliasing, and I'm going to set this to one and eight. And we're not going to be overriding the anti-aliasing for now. This is pretty much just going to be the default, which is TSR. I'll go to output and I will just put a folder here with it off. So like folder MB off, right? And then for the actual frame rate, I'll say 24 frames per second. And we'll render about 120 frames of this at 1920 by 1080 is OK, except and render local. All right, so now that our render is done, I went ahead and opened up DaVinci Resolve to take a look at our result. So if I go here, I have it here. I'll go open a new timeline and I'll just drag and drop that here and I'll press play. Actually, make this bigger here and I'll press play right now. So this is without motion blur and if you see, if I frame by frame this, we can read the cycle right here every single frame. That tells us that there is zero motion blur in this. And again, I am seeing this a lot on YouTube with animations is that people are not utilizing motion blur for cinematics. All right, so here is the off. And let me go ahead and go back to our scene. And I will go to my edit project settings and turn on motion blur. All right, I'll check this off, close it, and then go to my post process volume. If you don't have one, just go ahead and create one. Go into here and go to visual effects, post process volume. But I already have one set here. And on the motion blur, if I type in motion blur right here, the amount by default is 0.5. For the target FPS, I'm going to set that to 24 because that's what we at, 24 frames per second. And now if I press play, you're going to see that we have some motion blur in there. So just by switching on motion blur, you can already see it's making a lot of difference. And so again, we'll go to our render queue and I'll switch this to on. Anti-aliasing, I'm not touching that, so we're still going to be using just the default. This is actually only 96 frames. And then for the folder, I just created one for on. Select that. And let's render this one. OK, our render is done. Let's go back to DaVinci Resolve and pull that footage from the actual on folder and drag and drop it. So we have MB on now. 
and I will stack it kind of right on top of each other. I'll mute the one below, and let's play back. So you can see that looks much, much better. I'll put it in full screen here. Here it is with motion blur turned on. And again, if I go frame by frame, we are not able to read those words because we are getting motion blur. And again, in real life, we should have some kind of motion blur when something is moving really, really fast. Now, I'm not going to stop here. Uh, what I'm going to show you next is how I actually render out my cinematics with motion blur. What I will do next is go to my movie render queue settings again, and I'll turn on the settings. And in the anti-aliasing, I'm going to override the anti-aliasing, and I'm going to set that to none. Additionally, I'm going to change my sample count to 2 and temporal sample count to 8. So now we're going to have 16 samples total. Now, if I don't override the anti-aliasing, we're going to get an error message here, like a warning. It's going to say this is not going to work. So for you to be able to increase the samples, you're going to have to override the anti-aliasing. So that's what we're doing right now. Additionally, there are two CVARs that you can use to improve your motion blur quality. Okay. So if I go to settings, I'll go to console variables, and I'll add one right here. Now, if you're using 5.3, you should be able to just type in here, motion blur. And what you're looking for is motion blur separable. And I'll put a question mark right here. I'll just accept this for now so you can see adds a second motion blur pass that smooths noise for higher quality blur. By default, this is set to zero, but what we're going to do is set it to one. So I'll go back to my movie render queue, go to my console variables, and I'll set this to one. And what we're going to do next is add another console variable by click on the plus button here. And what we're going to do is say motion blur quality. And once again, I can actually put a question mark on this and go to my output log and show you what this is all about also. So I'll go here. I'll minimize this for now. And this is going to say that defines the motion blur method, which allows to adjust for quality or performance. Zero is off, one is low, and then four is very high. So you guessed it, we're going to be using the option number four. So let's go back to my movie render queue. Go to my console variables. I will remove this question mark and then we'll set this to four, which is the highest quality settings. For the output, I just created a new folder called MB Advance and file name MB Advance. And we'll just click render. Now, this is going to render a little bit more than before because we are now rendering 16 samples versus eight earlier. All right, so our render is finished. So I'll go back to DaVinci Resolve and I have my MB Advance. I'll drag and drop it in there. And we will just stack it on top right here. And once again, I will mute the one below. So we will watch just the, the one with the advanced CVARs and anti-aliasing. So I'll press play. And as you can see here, it looks much, much better. So here it is without the CVAR and anti-aliasing changed. And here it is with. And one of the main difference you're going to see right here is by giving it more samples, this area right here is a lot more defined than we doubt the CVAR and anti-aliasing. So again, if I turn this on, you're going to see that we can actually see a little bit more detail in there. Now, again, this is really up to you to decide whether you want to use this or not, because it is going to increase your render time a little bit more. But for me, those two CVARs are in my preset. They never leave because I do want the highest, highest quality whenever it comes to motion blur. Now, you can increase the sample size maybe to 16 or 32, but that's totally up to you. That's going to increase your render times even more so. Now, that being said, this is going to only work with regular rendering. If you're doing path tracing, that is a whole different level as far as motion blurs are concerned. That being said, that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you all learned something new today. And again, I know it sounds really basic, but at the same time, I think we need to go back to basic because this setting right here is actually very, very easy to overlook. But yeah, that's pretty much it. 
I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace out.